So sometimes you can just be merrily bobbing along, ponds going great, fish are looking great, everything's fine. And all of a sudden, something happens. Now these things can be an absolute catastrophe. This week has not gone well down at the Devon Koi Pond. We've had a really bad week. Something happened and it felt a little bit like this. One minute we're okay, next minute. Hi, and welcome down to Devon Koi Pond on not a bad morning. It's actually not been so nice now for a good week. Well, two, three days ago, pond temperature dipped down below 20. That's the first time the pond temp's been down below 20 degrees for getting on for three and a half, four months. So pond's sitting around, uh, well, when I looked first thing this morning, which is at 19.5. So we're not far under, but it's under 20 degrees. Fish are still blooming well hungry, well up for it. While I'm at it, a nagging ear, get down, hit the subscribe and the like button or the dislike button if you don't like the videos, don't mind either way. Then hit the subscription button if you want to catch everything that's going on. But this week, I'm going back to a video I did last year, I think it was 13 or 14 months ago. One of the early videos I did when I had a problem, or I thought I had a problem. So, I'm going to click you over and put that video in here. Now, if you have seen it before and don't want to see it again, just fast forward to a point, a time I'll give you up here. Fast forward to this time and it'll be after that video, okay? If you haven't uh, seen the video on ammonia, then uh, stick with it a minute. I'm going to re-show it. I've uh, trimmed it a little bit anyway. I had problems with it. It's been showing and viewing quite well from last year. Um, I get over a thousand people a month viewing the video. But uh, YouTube, in its infinite wisdom, just, um, didn't like some of the music that was playing somewhere in the background on the track and decided cut, I had to cut half the sound out of it. Well, they cut half the sound out of it on a uh, music rights thing. Uh, it was, but anyway, it was spoiled the track. So I'll put in a time up here. If you want to jump forward to that time, if you haven't seen it or don't want to see it again, you can and we'll carry on from there. Hi, here we are down at the Devon Koi Pond on Saturday 20th of July. We've had a bad week this week. So I'm going to go through day by day what happened and the kind of catastrophe we've had. So just after last week's video, I did my weekly pond tests. Went right through everything and the ammonia was showing at spiking at uh, kind of 0 0.5 to 0 0.1. So it was quite high at a near warning level for the fish. So panicking as you do, I dropped about 600, 500, 600 gallons of water out the pond and they started a slow refill on uh, the Sunday. And uh, by Monday morning, I had uh, refilled the pond. I uh, took another water test on the Monday night, still showing high ammonia nearly the same levels as they were on Sunday. I had stopped feeding the fish on the Sunday as well. So on the Monday I dropped about 600 gallons again and another slow refill of the pond. Over the Monday night, Tuesday morning, another water test. The ammonia was still at the same levels. I know I was starting to panic. The ammonia wasn't coming down at all and uh, it was showing way high. Fish all seemed fine, so on the Tuesday I uh, decided to do uh, an ammonia test on the tap water. So I tested the ammonia on the tap water, and uh, lo and behold, the tap water came up with exactly the same level as the pond. So, thinking through my uh, knowledge, what I've learned over the years, um, some water authorities have started using chloramine as a means. Of doing the water rather than chlorine. Now chloramine actually contains ammonia. So worried that I had was getting ammonia in the tap water, I contacted Southwest Water, who assured me over the phone that they didn't use chloramine, 
you want to use chlorine on the water. But uh, apparently there was a, the chap I was talking to was very close by to me, lived close by uh, to me here, and said he was all too willing to pop round on his way home from work and take a water sample. So accepting his kind offer, on Tuesday evening the chap from the water board turned up, took a sample of my tap water, offered to take a sample of my pond water as well, just to see what was happening and said he would get a full lab report on it. So he trotted off with that, I drained about another 600 gallons out of the pond and started refilling that. Meantime I'm starting to wonder, this was a new test kit that I'd opened on the Sunday, first time I'd used it. Now I've used this brand of test kits for 10 years or more and go through several kits in a year, testing nearly every week or fortnightly at the most. And I've never had this kind of problem before. I've tested the tap water before with the kits and they've always come back as fine. But tested the tap water, and lo and behold, was some showing ammonia, same level as the pond. So that's why I called the water board chap round. Now he assured me while he was here, oh mate, there's no ammonia in the tap water. But I'll tell you the tests. So he went off with the test, tests and went off with the samples. So Wednesday, I picked up another test kit, different brand, and tested the pond with that. Lo and behold, virtually no ammonia in the pond. Tested right alongside the other kit, which was still showing exactly the same reading it showed me on Sunday. So panic seemed to be over, the water was fine, the test kit was at fault. I'll show you the two samples side by side in a minute. Now, I don't know what's going on. I've contacted the manager, uh, manufacturer of the kit. Uh, they're assuring me it should be right. They can't understand why it's not. The kit's brand new. It's in date of 2021. So it's over a year um, of date on the kit. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand it at all. But I've had so much panic and grief this week. I changed so much water. I've used a pond bomb. All this was done earlier in the week. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with the water. Now the kit that I've been testing with, um, I happen to have two different brands of bottled water home here. I tested those with the ammonia test from the kit as well. Both the bottles of water showed ammonia. So the kit is definitely at fault. I can't understand it. I'll show you the pictures in a little bit. But it was a bad week. Stress, worry, huge water changes. My lawn has had so much water over it, it's like a paddy field, because I didn't want to pump it down the drain, I've pumped it over the lawn. And then, to top it all, Friday, we've had a load of rain anyway. So, my lawn doesn't need watering. This little episode will have cost me quite a bit of money. I've been on to the manufacturer of the kit to see if I can get anything out of them. I'll let you know what happens. I'm not holding my hopes up too much. Um, somewhere in the small print somewhere, there'll be, don't rely on this kit. But uh, if you can't rely on the kit and you have to test the test kit, what's going on? So if you do get a sudden spike of something, don't assume that you def you have got it. It could be something wrong with the test kit you're using. Because this is what's happened to me. It's been a bad week, but we're over it now. Which has been a, a great relief in the last sort of 12 hours, rather than stressing over the pond the entire week because I've never had water problems of this sort of multitude before. I've had slight rises in ammonia, slight um, rises in nitrite, nitrate, and uh, managed to bring them all down within a day or two. But uh, this just wasn't happening, wasn't working for me, and it was all down to the test kit. So I'll pop this little video together on this, post it up, um, just as a warning to some of you, to don't believe what your test kit t tells you. Test your test kit afterwards, just try it on some plain tap water, a bottle of water, just to see, to make sure that you are getting the kind of readings you ought to be getting. getting. So that's about it from down here this week. Um, I'm going to have a nice peaceful weekend now, put my feet up, bottle of wine in front of the pond for the weekend and enjoy a stress-free weekend rather than the stressful week I've had. So I'll catch you all later in another video. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow my subscriber base so I can do more videos like this. Hope the sound's better on this one. I'm trying a different camera. We'll see what happens. 
So it was goodbye for okay. me down here at the Devon so Court Park. There's that video from last year, um, 13 or 14 months ago. I filmed that, and uh, I had a little problem. Um, if you've just watched it for the first time, the problem wasn't real, okay? The problem happened, and it was all caused by a faulty test kit. Now, you get kind of complacent with a test in your water. You test, I test mine once or twice a week, summertime. Winter time, once a week, once a fortnight kind of thing. Not so often, because you aren't putting the food in, but I, I check it regularly. And uh, on that particular day, came out, grabbed the test kit, came down, tested the water. Oh my God, and the ammonia was really high for me. From a reading of zero, sort of three days before, the ammonia was sky high for me. Now, just panicking instantly like, I dumped uh, 300, 250, 300 gallons of water out of the pond, popped that in, that took me about three, four hours to get that back in. Tested again, still looking the same, so I dumped more water, and I carried on like that, and I, I probably dumped more than half the pond in the end. Then, coming to a realisation something went right, because it wasn't altering each time I tried it. I had a look at the test kit, now it was a brand new test kit, so... I hadn't unwrapped it that morning, I had unwrapped it the week before because the old one was empty and I had the new one there ready to go, so I just unwrapped it. And uh, that was the first test I'd ever done with that kit. So, trying some dechlorinated tap water, it, uh, just on the uh, ammonia, came back exactly the same reading, high. Well, this can't be right out of the tap. So you double check again, so I had uh, a couple of different brands of bottled water, tested those, poof. Always the same reading on the ammonia, exactly the same, high in ammonia. Something not right here. By then I dumped a load of water out, so I contacted uh, the people who supplied the test kit. Won't mention their name, don't need to. They're very good. They were honest, straight to the point. Just wanted a batch number off the kit, and there was a fault with the test kits. Now, uh, they sorted me out to my satisfaction, but I should not have panicked in that first place but you do panic in those situations. So the first thing to do, if you get a bad reading on anything off of a test kit on your pond, is to double check it. You should always have kind of a baseline every uh, month, month and a half, two months maybe. Test your tap water, just see what it's like anyway. So you know you've got a continuous reading from that. Jot it all down in a little book on a little piece of paper so you know what your average reading is for your tap water. And you can refer to that, so if you get a bad reading on something, double test it, check your tap water, check a bottle of water, see that uh, everything looks okay with the test kit. Retest again on the bomb water before you jump in and do anything silly, like changing shitloads of water and stuff like that. It's kind of that, don't panic, Captain Mannering, don't panic. Well, you do, especially when you become complacent with the tests always coming back as a reliable, yes that's fine, yes that's fine, and then all of a sudden, boom. But a pH as well, that could do the same thing to you, you could end up swapping out loads of water, and no need to. But that's that bit, and an update on that video. To those of you that haven't seen it, hope you enjoyed it. It was an early effort, I've edited it a little bit more, but uh, it was quite a good video, get some good viewing figures. But the main thing is, if you get a tough, bad test result, don't panic test the test kit first okay that's a quick look at the fish I'll double check the pond temperature and uh, that will kind of be it for this video I'll give them a little bit of food a minute so they want to come over oh yeah they're more than interested as you can see the tea staining in the water greatly disappeared still got a little bit to it but it's a lot better as to whether it's uh, the charcoal activated damn charcoal carbon or uh, the foam fractionator I'm not sure but something is uh, clearing it out now let's have a quick look at the temperature while I've got the camera in my hand Nineteen point six, so it's gone up a bit of a point. 
well, it's 10 o'clock in the morning now. When I first looked earlier, it was about 7 o'clock. But uh, I'm sorry to see those temperatures down from the 20 degrees. It's a great shame. As you can see, my little piggies here, they're always hungry for it. Now these three chags here, center, the two twins and the light colored one, they were all got the same time. They am I've put some size on this year. Okay. Right. So for this week, down here in Devon, that's an update on the ammonia video. Don't panic if you get a bad result on something from the pond. Always double test just to make sure before you go anything silly. Like changing water or anything like that which is always the first response. You get a bad reading on anything you should know the base on your tap water. And that you can change water out. So from down here in not so sunny Devon at the moment. Was when I started this video. It looks like we might get a shower. We'll catch you all on the next one. Bye for now.